Each year, over 3 million people visit Yosemite National Park. Some are simply passing through, viewing the landscape from their car, and hitting the big must-sees like the Half Dome or Yosemite Falls. But others, hikers, boaters, photographers, visit the park for recreation. With the national park encompassing such a massive area, it's no surprise that hikers and visitors easily get lost. There are over 750 miles of trails to explore, and some head out on their own while others go off in groups. Over the last decade, Yosemite Search and Rescue has performed just shy of 2,000 missions to assist visitors. But not everyone returns from the trails. According to the National Parks Traveler, there have been over 30 unsolved missing persons in Yosemite National Park since 1909. F.P. Shepard was the first person to vanish in Yosemite with no known outcome. He was reporting missing June 17, 1909. Shepard was last seen at or near the Glacier Point Hotel, an 80-room hotel overlooking Yosemite Valley that was later destroyed by a fire in 1969. He was an immigrant and jeweler from England, residing in San Francisco. It's said that Shepard was heading for Sentinel Dome on June 17th a large granite outcropping with very little shade along the hike. Sentinel has views of both Half Dome and Yosemite Falls. Several accounts note that Shepard had companions, but there's some disagreement over exactly who accompanied him. Some claim two young women went along. Others say that he left with a party of tourists. Either way, fog rolled in and Shepard's companions turned back, leaving him to hike alone. He never returned. Over the course of four days, the U.S. Cavalry searched for Shepard with bloodhounds. Eventually, the search efforts were called off as fog made it hard to continue on. F.P. Shepard's remains have never been found, and there's a lot of speculation around the fog, which seemed to appear in quite a few missing person cases. Whatever happened to Shepard, he was the first in a long line of people who have gone missing at Yosemite National Park. Mr. Emerson Holt made headlines in 1943, when the prominent vice president of the Riverside Title Company was reporting missing in Yosemite Valley. Holt left Camp Curry, a visitor resort just inside of Yosemite Valley, with a group of 20 other individuals. The group was made up of the Los Angeles Division of the Sierra Club, and the plan was to hike 13 miles. Park Superintendent Frank Kitteridge took the report from Holt's companions, who grew worried that he hadn't rejoined the group. Kitteridge began a search immediately and checked the area of the Merced River where Holt was said to sit and rest. He noted that there was no cliffs or deep pools within several hundred yards, so Holt likely wasn't injured by slipping, nor did it look like he could have fallen and drowned. There's no available information on when the search was called off, but Holt was never found and remains a missing person in Yosemite's list to this day. Unfortunately, Kenneth Klein and his companion John Gunn were shortly added to the list of Yosemite's missing mysteries. Both young men worked as summer salesmen at the Chevron Yosemite Lodge and planned a hike from Camp 4 to Eagle Peak. They also planned to meet a minister who would be hiking the same area at the top of the peak before they headed back. It's obvious from various accounts that both young men had every intention of returning to the lodge. Gunn had a late shift starting at 11 p.m. that night. However, their roommate, Greg Jackson, would later report that they never came back to the tent. The next day, on July 29th, neither man showed up for work. As Jackson made authorities aware that Klein and Gunn hadn't come back the previous night, the search teams were deployed. Gunn's motorcycle and Klein's car were found near the trailhead. At that time, no other signs of the men were discovered in the area. Search efforts continued until August 5th, the same year before they were called off. Then, on September 4th, a body was found in a deep pool above Yosemite Falls, in a nightmarish situation of two young brothers. The badly decomposed body was discovered as they hiked the area. As reported by the Madera Tribute, a team of eight rangers, as well as a helicopter, worked on recovering the body. 
despite clothing still on the body, khaki shorts and tennis shoes, a positive ID was never made. Gunn's father was asked to try to identify him, but he couldn't. Authorities also checked dental records, but no determination was ever made on whether the body was John Gunn's or Kenneth Klein's. There's a chance that despite the coincidence of time and place, it may be belonged to someone else entirely. In 1968, a report written by park ranger Steve Hickman detailed the situation and the analysis of the findings. In this report, Hickman identifies that the body was John Gunn's, although this was never been publicly stated by authorities. Hickman noted that this area is off trail and dangerous during spring and summer due to slippery rock, due to the spray from the falls. His assumption was that the men were trying to cross the Yosemite Creek and slipped in, easily swept away with the current. Additionally, Hickman states in his report, it is evident that the party exercised poor judgment based on inexperience. But there are still so many questions. Was the body ever positively ID'd as either John Gunn or Kenneth Klein? If it was, what happened to the other companion? And where did their body end up? And if the body belonged to neither Gunn nor Klein, their disappearance in Yosemite remains a mystery. Arthur Jeff Estes had every intention of returning from a planned overnight solo hike. He told his friends he'd be hiking back the following morning via Snow Creek Trail, noted to be a grueling hike that offers amazing views. Estes' plan was to spend the night at May Lake. He set out on May 24, 1976, after getting dropped off at May Lake Road, but was never seen again. Estes was 25 years old, described as 5'10 and 165 pounds with thick hair and a mustache. There's absolutely no clue as to what happened to Jeff Estes. But what makes his disappearance even more interesting is the location he went missing in. This area in Yosemite National Park has three other missing persons associated with it. Timothy Nolan, Stacy Aris, and park ranger John Blevins. Both Noah and Blevins had wilderness experience, so it seems odd that they tripped up somehow. Their bodies were eventually found, but Eris still remains missing to this day. A fourth mystery man also turned up in this area in 1968, only a few years before and one mile away from where Estes would go missing. The mystery man has never been identified, but this body was pulled out of a crevasse. Strangely enough, the mystery man lacked the expected blunt force trauma injuries and breaks or fractures that a fall down a crevasse would cause. Whether there's a logical or borderline paranormal reason for people going missing here, it's obviously a dangerous area. Hikers who were in the areas in the 70s have stated that even back then, the trail Jeff Estes took was well-worn and well-marked. So how did he simply disappear into thin air? Did he step off the trail to take in the view? Or is there something more sinister going on here in this area of the park? The disappearance of Stacy Aris in 1981 is one of the most well-known cases among missing person enthusiasts and national park travelers. July 8, 1981 will become, for many people involved, a strange day in history. It began with Stacy Aris, 14, visited Yosemite with her father George and six other companions. Stacy was a young girl with blonde hair and a noticeable upper and lower dental retainers. That day, she wore a windbreaker, a white jersey blouse, pull-on pinstripe shorts, and a gold ankle bracelet. The group, including Stacy and her father, decided to book a horseback trip to the High Sierra Camp, led by a guide. In total, 10 people headed for the camps. They left from Tuolumne and traveled along the John Muir Trail, stopping at the Cathedral Lakes for lunch. Thus far, no one in the group thought the day would end with a young girl missing and no explanation. The guide was leading the group to the Sunrise High Sierra Camp, where they would stay overnight before heading out on the High Sierra Camp Loop. After reaching the camping area, the group broke up to relax and explore a bit. Stacy showered 
and told her father that she was going for a walk down the trail with Gerald Stewart, 71. Although it's not clear how well George and Stacy knew Stewart, he was quickly removed as a suspect due to his age and abilities. Stacy's father instructed her to change her sandals out for hiking boots before leaving, which she did. After a short while, Gerald Stewart told Stacy he needed to stop and rest. The guide would later confirm that Gerald sat down on a boulder as Stacy walked away from him. The two men were the last to see Stacy Eris alive and well, continuing on her short hike. The trail Stacy followed went down a granite hill toward a tree line surrounding the lake. Stacy was interested in taking photos of the lake with her Olympus camera and was only planning on being gone for a few minutes. When it became obvious that something happened to prevent her returning, a search of the area began. Stacy's camera lens was eventually found on the trail leading down to the lake, but there was no other sign of her. The formal search, including helicopters and hundreds of people, never turned up any clue on what might have happened to her. The search lasted for nine days. In an article from the McClatchy News Service, National Park Superintendent Robert Binawise stated that Stacy Aris just seemed to have disappeared. Other park officials insinuated that Stacy may have walked off intentionally as she was having trouble at school and home. However, her father and park spokeswoman Linda Abbott doubted that theory as they both believed Stacy wouldn't have tried to leave in sandals. She knew better than to hike long distances in poor footwear. The disappearance of Stacy Ayres struck the California community hard. Several newspapers and news outlets continued to report on the case regularly, noting that nothing significant had been found over the course of months. To this very day, loyal followers and amateur investigators ponder what may have happened to the teenager. The mystery of Stacy's disappearance looms large in the history of Yosemite National Park. After all, it's not everyone disappears in plain sight. Irish tourist Kieran Burke was number 28 to be added to Yosemite's list of missing persons in April of 2000. Burke was from Dublin and was on a two-week vacation to visit San Francisco at the time. He booked a room in Yosemite National Park from April 4th to April 6th. But Kieran Burke would never check out. Kieran was 44 at the time when his rental car was found unattended in Curry Village parking lot. Staff notified authorities when he didn't check out of his room on April 6th, and it was quickly determined that the last time that he was seen was Wednesday, April 5th at Curry Village. At the time, Burke was wearing a leather bomber jacket. It was noted by acquaintances that Burke was adventurous and had previous hiking experience in the Himalayans. Unfortunately, the search for Karen didn't begin until six days after he was last seen. Although some media sources note that Karen was planning to go for a hike, there's no other information to support that statement or hint at where he might have been heading. Of course, it would make sense if the Dubliner decided to take a day hike while visiting the park especially with his background in hiking, but no other hikers or visitors reported seeing him on any of the 800 miles of trails in the park that day or any day after. Lorcan Burke, Kieran's brother, eventually flew to San Francisco to join the weeks-long search, although a spokesperson for Yosemite National Park asked that anyone with potential video or photo evidence of Kieran come forward, no evidence was ever turned in. The website Missing Irish People notes that Kieran is married and has three children in Ireland. All his relatives are very distressed about his disappearance. He remains missing to this day. In June 11th, George Penka was spotted for the last time standing at the top of Upper Yosemite Falls around 2.40 p.m. On June 17th, a Friday, George Penka went hiking with about 20 other people from his church group. The group was visiting Yosemite National Park and planned to walk the Upper Yosemite Fall Trail that day. George was a big guy, hard to miss, and wore gray sweatpants and a black t-shirt that day. He was carrying a blue cloth bag with some food and water, enough to sustain him on a short hike. 
the Yosemite Falls Trail where George and his church group had decided to head out, is described by the National Park as one of the oldest historic trails. It leads to the top of North America's tallest waterfall, with switchback after switchback and beautiful views of the valley. The National Park Service warns visitors to stay on the maintained path as there are steep drops nearby. The upper part of the trail as hikers reach the falls is steep, rocky, and can be treacherous. When they reach the top of the trail, George's group dispersed. Some stayed to enjoy the view, while others decided to begin the return trip at their own pace. Initially, George's friend assumed that he had hiked back down to the valley floor earlier, but it soon became obvious that something had gone terribly wrong and George had apparently vanished while on the trail. Due to the delay, George was reporting missing until 9 p.m. that same night. A search began that night and carried on to the next day. Weather has been noted to be tough on missing persons in Yosemite National Park, but conditions over the weekend were mild. Overnight temperatures stayed above 40 degrees. A little over 100 search and rescue personnel joined in the search efforts, as well as helicopters and several search dogs. But after a week of searching, no sign of George Penka was ever found. On June 23, 2011, efforts were downgraded to a limited, continuous search. Unfortunately for George, help came too late. While friends had assumed he'd hiked down earlier than the rest of the group, it was later determined to be more likely that he actually hung back. With his disappearance reported so late in the day, Searchers lost precious hours that could have led to finding him potentially injured. But since that day in mid-June, literally no trace or George Penka has ever been found. No body, no clothing, no item from his bag. What are the chances that he, like many others, stooped down to the water at the top of the falls and was swept away? For George Penka, what should have been a casual day hike with friends ended in a mystery. Yosemite National Park last released their list of unsolved missing person cases in March 2017, but since then several other hikers have gone missing in the park's boundaries. While some have been found, Richard Judd is not one of them. As of posting this video, Richard Judd is still missing. Judd, who is 69, was last seen on July 25, 2021. At the time, Judd and a partner embarked on a day hike from his camp near Lower Merced Pass Lake to Red Peak Pass. Although this is a short hike of three and a half miles, it's not unlikely that Judd may have become lost in the wilderness area surrounding the trail. Judd was wearing a blue shirt, gray pants, and carried white trekking poles to assist him. He stopped to refill his water and was separated from his hiking partner. He had not been seen since. The search for Richard Judd coincided with the search of Joel Thomason, 31, who also went missing in Yosemite while hiking alone on September 6, 2021. Joel Thomason initially planned to solo hike from the Hetch Hetchy to Lake Eleanor, and then back with a return date of September 9th. But that day came and went, and his family quickly reported him missing, He was last seen September 6th by a park ranger. Thomason's family noted that he had an extensive array of hiking equipment with him, including a hammock, camelback, collapsible sink, kayak, collapsible camp stove, and more. While Thomason might have been prepared for sudden misadventures, the belief he simply extended his trip wore off quickly as searches continued. Two months later, in November 2021, Thomason's family held a memorial service. They have since presumed that he is dead based on how long he's been missing in such a wild area. While his family still hopes that there's a sliver of a chance that he is still out there, Joel will likely be declared dead in the state of California. Despite extensive searches by ground, air, and boat, neither man has been found. As of today, it appears that Richard Judd and Joel Thomason will be listed on the next missing persons document that Yosemite National Park makes public.